Jade, what we're talking about today is using modal verbs to make deductions about a situation. But first I need to tell you, what does it mean to make a deduction? Well, let's imagine there's a situation. You see something, you observe something. This is your evidence. John looks tired. This is what you see, this is your evidence. Your deduction is how you interpret what you see. Your deduction is what you say about what you see. So for example, these are all different deductions you can make. You can say, he must be unwell. When we're making deductions about the present, things that are true now, in this moment, we use this structure. We use um, modal verb plus bare infinitive. So in the first example, here's the modal verb, and then this is the bare infinitive. It will always take this structure to make a deduction about the present. So when we say he must be unwell, must carries the meaning of certainty. So I see John, I see he's tired, and I interpret that as certainty. I understand the situation fully and I'm saying that he's tired. I could, however, say he might not be sleeping well. In this case, I'm using a different, a different modal verb. I'm using might. Might is my modal verb. And also this one's is a negative. So the negative goes in the middle position. The negative goes after the modal verb. Got too many pens going on here now. So the, um, the negative goes in between the two verbs. He might not be sleeping well. Might is not as certain as must. Might here means possibility. I'm looking at him, I see he's tired. My thought about the situation, my thought about the situation is that it's possible that John's tired. He might not be sleeping well. Here's another um, variation. He may be stressed. Again, this means possibility. What's the difference between might and may? Um, in British English, may is a little bit slightly more formal. That's the difference. And then what about this one? He can't be feeling well. When we use can't to make a deduction, um, sorry, we always have to use it in the negative. We can't, we can't do it, he can be. It doesn't make sense as a deduction. It always has to be can't. So we can say, he can't be feeling well. And this one again is certainty. So we could, if, we, if, we, if we're certain about our deductions, we would either use must or can't to do that. So it's not too hard. What if we're not talking about deductions about the present, ones that are true now? What if we're talking about past events? Hmm, what do we do then? Well, we use a different grammar structure. We use modal verb plus have plus the past perfect. So I find it easy in that when we see have there, it shows us that we're talking about something in the past. That's what you need to remember. Have shows us we're talking about the past. Let's look at some examples. Here's a different observation. Mr. Smith didn't attend today's meeting. Full stop. Um, so what, what we see in experience, we go to the meeting. Well, I'm going to say I go to the meeting. I go to the meeting. I expected to see Mr. Smith there. He was not there. That is my evidence. That's my observation. So what kind of deduction do I make following that? He must have forgotten about it. I know Mr. Smith. I know he's forgetful. Therefore, my deduction is he must have forgotten. Here's the structure, modal verb, then followed by have, followed by the past participle. This verb is forget, the past participle is forgotten. What does it mean? If we're using must, it's the same. Must means certainty. You're quite sure. You know him well and you're quite sure that he's forgotten about this. He, he forgot the meeting because again, we're talking about something in the past. What about this one? He might have missed his train. 
to reflect possibility. You're not quite certain about it this time. You know Mr. Smith, he's, he's generally a reliable guy. So you think that, you know, it must have been something outside of his control. It's possible that he didn't come to the meeting because he didn't manage to get his train on time. Next example, he may have called in sick. Uh, what does it mean to call in sick? That means when you're not feeling well, so you call up your job and you say, oh, I'm not coming today. That's what it means to call in sick. Again, we have exactly the same difference. May is slightly more formal than might. He may have called in sick. I'm not sure. It's like a suggestion. It's a possibility. And finally, he can't have known about it. You know Mr. Smith well, you know that whatever he would do, he would do anything to come to this meeting. The only way that can explain the reason he's not here is if, is if he, he didn't know about this meeting for some reason. Um, to reflect certainty, we're using can't. And because we're talking about the past, again, we're using have and then past participle. So that's how you do it. If you have a situation and you, you need to make a deduction on that situation, here's your, here's your observation, here's your evidence, but then you need to say, say something about it, give an opinion. What you need to do is be using these grammar structures. For talking about the present, there's no have in there, but for talking about a past event, then we use have in there to make our deduction. What you need to do now is go to the Ingvid website where you can do the quiz on this, flex your grammar muscles doing the quiz. And what I'd also like you to do before you go there is subscribe here on my Ingvid channel. Yeah, and come again and watch more videos from me. So I'm going to go and flex more of my grammar muscles and you're going to do the same. So bye.